What's up, Internet? My name is Michael Cook, and this is Blue Giant Media. We're here to help you find, learn, and play the games that you love. Today, we're going to take Chimera Station, which is by Mark Major and published by Tasty Minstrel Games. This is a worker placement game. We're going to open it up, we're going to set it up in real time so you can get a feel for how long it takes to set the game up. We're going to play through a couple rounds so you can get a good feel for the flow of play as well as the rules set. And then we'll come back and I'll give a little bit of feedback. Hopefully this will give you a good idea of how long it takes to set it up, how to get going as quick as possible. So, let's go ahead and ready, set, play. Chimera Station is a worker placement game where your workers have the ability to get you some unique abilities as the game goes on. So at the beginning you're going to choose, or each player is going to choose, one of the four different uh, colored people, but also you know, race of alien. You can choose either the A side, which is recommended for the first playthrough, where all the different races do the exact same thing, or the B side where they get some asymmetrical powers where they start with different things, they get different bonuses as the game goes on, it makes things pretty interesting. Um, we'll go ahead and play with the first, uh, the recommended you know, beginning where each player has one uh, of the cards on the A side, and I'll set up where two players. Grab the board here. And one thing to note is I have the deluxe version of the game, so the components that I have are going to be a little bit different than what you may or may not have, because I have these nice metal coins, but I also have, I can show you what you will likely have, is the cardboard tokens, which are still very nice. They, you know, they're still good quality cardstock. They're not cheap but I do have the deluxe version, so if you have different components, don't think that something's wrong with the game that you have. So we'll go ahead and open the components and set them out. We'll grab all these and set them out here. These can all be randomized. You can shuffle them up before you put them into some stacks or one stack, however you want, it doesn't really matter. You're gonna take all these. I usually will just take them and put a few stacks near here because they're going to be filling these spaces here, which is the reactor. So these are the different modules, the different, um, basically, spaces where your workers can go, and as the game goes on, you're going to be building them out onto your station. Okay. So, based off of the number of players, you will have different numbers of the workers here. In a two-player game, you're going to start with four of them. In a three-player game, you're going to start with three, and in a four-player game, you start with two. No matter how many you start with, you will set two aside to have the ability to gain as the game goes on. So since we're playing with two players, you will start with four with two set aside. And these are explained very clearly right here, so you can you don't really need to memorize that information. You can take your score markers, place them on the zero, and you can set your little stars here aside and set these trackers right here, which re measure your tech level. Set them at the level one. All right. Grab the bag of genetic components and you can set these to one side of the board. You can make it look all pretty if you want to. That is purely preference. 
although sometimes it is nice when it is easy to reach down and find exactly what it is you're looking for. Right, we are just about there. Then you're going to take all of these perk cards, make sure that they are shuffled up. Shift this down here, these down here, so that we can place these with three of them visible. And we have the round marker, which we'll set at round one. And this, which will cover, which will show that the command slot B, nobody can go there until the third round. And then we're going to grab these starting resource cards. Since we are play with two players, we will just keep the ones that say two plus players. And then we have a start player token. So we will randomly choose who's going to be the start player. Yellow will be the start player, which we'll go ahead and say is you. So since you are the start player, we will give you the start player marker. And then I get to be the first one to choose which of these starting uh, resources I want to have. So I can choose either three coins and a green um, genetic component, two coins and a yellow genetic component, or two food and four coins. I usually don't like feeding my people, so I will take the green, and since you're yellow, we'll just go ahead and say that you're yellow. So when you start with these, you will keep them right here. This is where you're going to store the genetic components that you have not put into your workers yet. All right, and then I am going to start with three coins. And you will start with two. And you're gonna go ahead and hang on to these cards because what they also let you do is at one point during the game, you can flip it over or discard it or however, one you, however you want to um, symbolize or show that you've used them but it will allow you to clear out all of the components uh, or the modules that are available here and put new ones out without taking an action to do so. So we will start out by putting these so that there are a certain number of them available. And now we are ready to go. So you'll be the first one to go. Now the places that you can go on your turn, you're just going to take one of your workers and you're going to place them on a module. There are some that are here to start to choose from, so you can choose from any of those. But also, as the game is going to go on, you're going to, going to have the ability to build more. So, let's see what I might want to do here. Alright, right here is where you're going to go to build. This one says, build a module, build a, that has a picture of a hex, uh, and then this worker may move to and activate that module. So to build one, you're going to pay the cost in the corner in coins. So I have two coins, so I can only really afford to build the ones that have two on them. Or this particular one says that it is worth, it's got a clock on it, so it's cost one because we're in round one, and it would give me one point. So the stars right here show how many points you get when you build that uh, module. So. When I build one, because let's just say I'm going to build this one, you have to build out from the central command hub. And where you build also matters because it's going to give you a benefit. So if I build here, it's going to give me two coins. If I build here, it's going to give, this would be you. <laughs> it would give you one of these brain components. If you go here, it'll give you two coins. If you go here, it'll get you a leaf component. If you go here, it'll give you one point per round, so it would be one point now. If you built it there later, it could be up to five points when you build there. So since I'm, you, <laughs> are running low on coins now, we'll just go ahead and say that you're building right here. That will let you immediately take your two coins back, 
and then you will get one point for building this because it has one point in the star symbol here and then you get to take this guy and this is optional but you can move him over here to activate that component or that module immediately and this one says that I can pay one component and then I can take six coins so you will pay that one that you had just gotten to collect six coins right back then it'll come over to me and let's say and this does not refill automatically in fact it kind of just slides down and I will refill it shortly to show you what it will do but I'm gonna build a couple more things first so right now I have three let's see what I might want to build None of those is looking too good to me right now, except for this one. So, I'll go here. I will pay two coins for this one. And I will place it right... We'll make a little bit of a foolish move just to show you how fun this can get. So if I build right here, I get one point, And I get two points for building this module, so one, two, three total. I will get one coin and one food. So I'll go ahead and place those down. Then I'm going to move my person over here and that lets me take one red component, the claws. Then it's going to come to you. So you will grab your worker. So now you have a pretty good amount of money. So. Hmm. That looks pretty good. So we're gonna go here. We're gonna pay five to build this one. So there's our five. We're going to build this one. And so as you can see, around the outside, things get pretty potent pretty quickly. If you go here, you're gonna get six coins right off the bat. So you're typically going to wanna build around the command hub earlier on, just so you don't lead or leave um, some of these really valuable spots open. So you could go here to get four food also, which is pretty nice. Let's go ahead and do that. So you're gonna go here and get four food. All right, then you're going to get three points one, two, three, because it gives you three points there. And then you get to move your person there. And again, that is optional, but we're going to go ahead and do that because you go there, you're going to get two coins, and then you get to build again. So, but this time you're not going to be able to move. It just says, get two coins and build. So now you have five coins and let's see, let's build. pay four to build this one and we will go ahead and build the brain right here and so we'll still get the three points one two three and we covered up the brain component so we get to take one of those and it's going to come back over here now instead of going and building which is what we do a lot because it's pretty cool <laughs> it gives us points gives us more options for where to go but I'm gonna go over here to the splicing lab. When you go to the splicing lab, you immediately are going to take your components. You can take up to two of them and you're going to put them onto your little guy, which is now a big guy. And he's gonna stay there. At the end of the round, he will then get to come out. So they go over here to the splicing lab and then they're late arrivals to the board. So that is my turn. Now, the benefits to each of these. The green, they, let, they uh, will photosynthesize so that they don't need to be fed extra food. They get their own food. So that saves me the need to get more food. The tentacles make it so whenever you go somewhere that gives you coins or food, you get to take one extra. And if you go somewhere that gives you both of them, you get to get one extra of each. The claws, since normally you can't just bump somebody out of there, if you have claws, then you have the ability to bump someone out who is, doesn't have any, um, or has zero or one component 
added to them. And when they get bumped out, they're gonna go over here, and then for getting bumped out, they go to the workers' lounge and they get to have either a food or a coin. So getting bumped out is not a bad thing. Sometimes you want to go somewhere you know someone else is, either to block them or because they have claws because you're gonna get a little bit of extra resources. Not a bad thing. And the brain. If you have the brain, whenever you go somewhere that onto one of the modules, you get the number of points that are on the star. So you get additional points every time you place a worker that has the brain. You also get additional benefits for having two. So if you have two claws, that means you can displace any opponent, even if they have two components spliced onto them. If you have two green, then you're going to get two food. So you make enough food for yourself, but you also, I guess, you grow some extra and you can <laughs> shed some leaves to feed your friends. So you're gonna get feed yourself and one other worker. If you have two yellows, then whenever you go somewhere where it gives you a component. So like if you go over here, you can choose to pay either five coins and get two of the depicted component, or pay two coins to get one of the depicted component, or you can just place someone there and you get more based off of if you have that component. So here it says two food for each red component I have on here. Or if I go here, two food for each yellow component. Or here, two coins for each green component. So if you had two of them on it, you'd get more. But if you have uh, two of the tentacles and you go one in here, you can spend two coins and instead of just getting one, you will get two. Or if you go to one of the spots like this, you can go here and instead of just getting one set of red claws, you will get two sets. Then if you have two brains, it gives you um, an ability that I haven't really explained. When you go to the command station here, it's how you can take the first player token. So let's say on my next turn, maybe I want to go there. If I go here, I count up, uh, first of all, I'd take the first player token, but also I would look at all of your people and look at the tiles that they are on and I'd get as many points as are depicted on there. If I've got two brains, I get to look at all of them, including my own, and add those points to my total. So the components can be very interesting and the way that you match them up can be very interesting. So anyway, that's my turn. It'll come back over to you now. So now there's not a lot of options here anymore. And let's say I want to refill. I can go over here and if I do, I get a benefit based off of what has been uncovered here. So that's why everything slides down because they get more and more powerful as we get to the bottom because whenever you get this uh, beaker, it increases your technology. And as you increase technology, it's going to give you perk cards, which perk cards give you either abilities during the game, ways to score more points during the game, but then they also all give you a way to score more points at the end of the game. So this one right here says, whenever you build, you score one extra point, and then it's also worth eight points at the end of the game. This one right here, as soon as you get it, you're gonna get a number of points equal to the current round. Then it says that your um, workers cannot be displaced by anyone's claws. So that makes it so you can't be bumped out of the way. You can block no matter what. And it also gives you eight points at the end of the game. So these perks can be pretty interesting to give you extra abilities, extra ways to score points, as well as points at the end of the game. So those can be really good. The other thing you get by leveling up is that is how we, you get more workers. So on the base side, whenever you get to level three, tech level three, that's when you're gonna get an additional worker. You also get an, addi an additional worker at level five, and then at level seven, you're gonna get extra two extra components, and then at level eight, you're gonna get eight points, and then every time you get tech after that, it's eight points every time. So tech can be very powerful. So tech, extra components, coin, food, and a point. So right now, you're going to refill these four spots, so you're going to get a coin, food, and a point. So we will go ahead and grab a couple from over here, and we will refill. You're going to get one coin, one food, and one point. All right, then it'll come back over to me. So now I have more options, but I also don't have a lot of coins. So let's see what I might want to do. I still would like to build something but there's not a lot of options there. However, this one does still cost one coin, and this one and, and gives me one point. So what I can do now is go here, which lets me build this. I can build it over here. It costs only one coin, 
it's going to give me only one point, but I'm also going to get six coins for going here. So it doesn't give me a lot, but the other thing I'm going to do is not move him over there, partially because I can't, but also just because I don't really have an option there. Alright, so now it's going to come to you. And maybe at this point, you decide that you want to get your brain. So you're going to go over to the spicing lab. Splicing lab. And then it'll come back to me, and I just have one worker, and I need more food. So, I will go here to get two more food. Alright, so now we've placed all of our workers, so now we come over to the splicing lab, and we're going to go from here to here to here. So now this guy gets to go. I can move him over here, as I mentioned before, and that's going to give me four points because your guys are on modules that add up to four. One, two, three, four. And it also lets me take the first player marker. And then it's going to come to your turn. Let's say you go here. Since you have a brain, you're going to get three points right off the bat. One, two, three. And then this says that you get points for every module adjacent to Command Hub, which right now there are two, so you get an additional one, two points. Now, end of round, we will take all of our people back. And now we feed our people. So you need to feed your people four. I need to feed my people three, because this one feeds himself. Okay. If you cannot feed, then you must lose a genetic component. If you're going to lose that component, it has to be from an attached worker. It can't be from your pool. If you don't have one attached, then you must lose two points. So feeding gets pretty important. And the two points is basically because at the end of the game, each component that you have here is worth two points as well. So it kind of e evens out. Since you don't have the component to lose, it's going to let you lose the two points now rather than later at the end of the game. Okay, then the start player does not rotate, it stays there, and we move down to the next round. And as you can see, in the third round, we will get three new perk cards out, and then everybody's technology goes up by one. And it also says that the um, bonus for building cards, or modules, doubles. So instead of getting two points for this one, you would get four points. And in the fifth um, round, it then triples. So you'll get three new perk cards again, everyone advances technology one, and you're going to have triple points when you build a module. All right, so it'll go through all five of these rounds, getting more and more and more things out here for you to work with. And at the end of the fifth round, you're going to total up all of your points from uh, you'll keep track of things as you go. Leftover food is worth one point for every two. Same thing with coins. Uh, or I guess coins, sorry, are worth one point for every three coins that you have. Every component you have, whether it's attached or not, is worth two points. And then you can total up your perks that give you various different ways of scoring points. And the player with the most points at the end of the game is going to be the winner. One of the fun things about this game is the way you build, you customize your personal um, workers. You can decide whether you want to go for your technology, which can be pretty powerful, a good way to get to your workers quickly, so you have more to work with, but then you need more to feed. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to get the components, and based off of the ways the modules come out, every game plays a little bit differently. So you're going to want to look and see what's coming. Coins, I think, at the beginning of the game are very important, but one thing you have to pay attention to is that first, I'd say the first two rounds, really, just about nothing that you do, points-wise, is going to really matter. Because, as you can see at the end of the first round, where I'm at 8 points and you are at 13 points, in the fourth and especially the fifth round, you're going to be taking an action where each action could net you upwards of 30 or 40 points. So, depending on how you have things stacked up. So, don't panic at all if at the end of the first round you have virtually no points. It's much more important to get coins and get the right modules out here and start getting the right um, components added here and get an idea of what it is you want to go for. Maybe you want to get your research up. Maybe you want to get uh, so that you have 
all of your people are fed already. Maybe you want to get it set up so you have some sort of way to get lots and lots and lots of food. Maybe you just want to be very careful about how this gets built out. You want to set it up so, like this one says, get one point for every adja you know, module adjacent to a command hub. Maybe you want to just keep building around here and let your opponent open up all of these great things out here and just keep trying to get this. Maybe you want to get claws so that you can keep on bumping people out. Maybe you're going to get a perk that makes it so when you bump people, uh, right here, uh, this one says, whenever your claw displaces a worker, you receive the coin or food when they go to the worker lounge. And, it, and uh, so you're a thug, <laughs> you get to bully them. You send them to the worker's lounge and you get to have the coin or the food. So the game just has so many different ways to, to work. It can be a little bit overwhelming. So for your first playthrough, as I say with most games, focus on not breaking the rules. You're placing, you're getting the benefits, keep track of where things are going, keep track of your points as you go, and um, just focus on not breaking the rules and kind of seeing where things go. And then as you get to get through that first game, as you get further on, you're going to start to see the pace of the game and see what things were important and what things weren't. So that is Chimera Station. Now you should have a pretty good idea of how to set up and play through Mark Major's Chimera Station, published by Tasty Minstrel Games. If I missed anything in the rules, or if I was unclear, please let me know in the comments section below so I can straighten myself out. And uh, if you have any other recommendations for games or movies that I should prepare, please let me know in the comments section as well. If you want to know more about Chimera Station, you can look for links in the, comments se in the uh, description section, and you'll also find a link there to Macronova Games where you can buy many great games. Until next time, I want to thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like what you see, and as always, have a wonderful day.